In this video, I'm going to show you how to apply a finish to wood. For this tutorial, you will need a finish. This could be water-based or oil-based, a small container and a mixing stick, and a paintbrush. I have a nylon, a nylon polyester, and a nylon polyester blend. The best finish can be added with a nylon brush because it's the softest type of bristle. This is less likely to leave any brush strokes in the finish. However, a nylon polyester blend brush will give you acceptable results. If you're doing curved or hard to reach areas, a foam brush is very handy. Optional safety equipment include rubber gloves and goggles. The first step is to thoroughly stir the finish. You do not want to shake this because it'll entrap air bubbles in the finish. These will show up on the wood after you apply the finish. So always stir and stir very slowly. So I'm just going to put the stirring stick inside and I'm going to start stirring like this. I'm going to make sure and scrape the sides and bottoms to make sure I thoroughly mix all the solids that may have settled. After stirring for a while, you could remove the stirring stick and dry it off. You don't want this to sit on any paper towels because it'll stick to it and it'll likely ruin your stirring stick. I'm just going to let the excess drain off and then wipe it clean. I'm going to set this aside on a clean surface so no dust particles can dry into this finish. I'll be able to reuse it later that way. Next step is to pour the finish into your working bowl. Only pour an amount that you know you will be able to use because you don't want to pour it back into the can when you're done. You'll have to dispose of it afterward. So I'm only going to start small and see how far I could go with it. This is already dry finish, so you want to remove any flakes that may have collected because you don't want this showing up in your finish either. Don't forget to retighten the lid on your finish. For now, I'm just going to cover this with a paper plate so it doesn't dry out at all. In this next step, I'm going to thoroughly vacuum the wood surface. Then I'm going to wipe it with either a tack cloth. In my case, I'm just going to use a microfiber towel. This is great for picking up small pieces of dust. Just very lightly run it across. I'm going to feel it, make sure I don't feel any pieces of dust. It feels very smooth. At this point, you can apply a sanding sealer if you want. My instructions say it may be used, but I'm not going to use one. The sanding sealer will help fill the cracks so you don't have to use as much normal finish. Now that you have a completely clean surface, if you previously stained it, it's best to test to make sure it's dry just in case. So all I have is a paper towel. I'm going to lightly run it across and make sure I don't see any stain coming up on my paper towel. Okay, I'm going to clean so it appears to be completely dry. This has actually been drying for about 36 hours. I know it's okay to apply a finish by now. However, if you're trying to stain and finish all in one day, always test it before because if this is still wet from the stain, your finish will not cure correctly and you'll get a horrible result and have to redo everything. The trick I'm going to try out is cutting out a notch in this foam brush. That way I could stick it and it'll fit perfectly around this edge and hopefully I could just go across and it'll get an even coverage. As you can see, I've cut it so it fits perfectly around the rounded edge. What I've done is moved my container on the step beneath, so I'll have easy access to it. I've put it on a paper plate, so if anything drips down, it will drip on the wood beneath it. I'm also going to keep my paper plate handy so I could cover this as soon as I'm done with it. So here, I have my nylon brush. I'm going to slowly dip it into the finish and let it absorb into the brushes. There can't be any air inside the brushes or it'll get air bubbles in your finish. So I'm going to slowly flex it like this, and you see those air bubbles coming up? That's air coming out of the bristles. So I'm going to continue to work it back and forth. All I'm doing is just flexing it. Now that I've saturated the brush, I'm going to lift it up, and I'm going to land right here in the middle. I'm going to first do a pass this way to distribute it, and I'm going to do a pass this way to distribute it. I'm going to re-dip it and do the same right next to it. I'm going to have three or four brush widths right here. I'm going to first go this way, then this way, move over a little, go this way, then this way, and continue until I completely cover it. Now that I have a fairly even coverage of finish, I'm going to make sure and get into the edges and corners. At this point, I'm going to put my brush back in the container, and now I'm going to move on to this edge right here. So I'm going to get my piece of foam, and the same as before, I'm going to make sure all the bubbles are out of it. I'm going to squeeze out the excess on the sides just a little bit. I don't want it dripping off the bottom when I'm moving across. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to start right here at the edge and just move it across slowly, getting a nice even coverage.
I'm gonna make sure I get into the corners right here. As well as I'm gonna angle it slightly so I get on the underside. Now that I've completely coated the wood, I'm gonna get my brush again. I'm gonna wring out any excess finish in it to make sure it's not carrying any finish at all. I'm just pushing it up against the sides. Now I'm gonna start at one end and very lightly move it across all the way to the other end. When I get in the corner, I'll have to stop obviously because I'll hit the edge. But at that point, I'm gonna get in the corner and move it until right till I just ended. I'm gonna do that all the way across. This is to give a nice even finish and remove any brush strokes. This will also help remove any bubbles that may be present. I'm gonna overlap slightly to make sure I get full coverage. And I'm basically just using the weight of the brush to move across. Also, when I've switched directions and I'm getting just this last little bit, whenever I lift off, I lift off very gradually so it feathers out right here off the transition zone. Now that you've done a very light pass on it, all you need to do is let it dry. Here's the wood once the finish has dried. It should appear very smooth other than the grains. It might not cover them completely since this is just the first coat, but everything else should feel very smooth. As soon as the first coat has finished drying, you have two options. The first option is to recoat with finish per your instructions on the can. It might suggest waiting a few more hours before you apply another coat. It might also say there's a maximum allowable of coats you could put on in any given time period. For instance, my says at most two coats per day. The second option is to let this completely dry for one full day. Then you will need to scuff the wood and then you can apply your next coat. If you take the first option and immediately coat this with some more finish, you will then need to let it cure for one full day or whatever your instructions say. Then all you need to do is lightly scuff it before applying your next coat. After scuffing it, you will then vacuum it and wipe it with a tack cloth and then you are free to apply another coat. You need to repeat this process after every day that you are applying coats. I plan on putting about 10 layers on this. So when beginning the first coat of each day, I'm going to lightly scuff it, vacuum it, tack cloth it, and then apply another finish. To scuff the finish, all you need is a high grade sanding sponge or a scotch bright pad will also work. This is 150 grit right here. All I'm gonna do is lightly rub it across. It's gonna create little micro scratches that the new finish will then be able to adhere to and stick correctly. Again, you are not trying to sand through or you might go through to the wood again. So just lightly scuff it like this. I'm making sure to go with the grain so any scratches will not appear after I apply the second finish. Be careful on any edges because you will easily eat through the finish. After scuffing it, I'm going to lightly vacuum it. I'm going to wipe it with a microfiber towel or a tack cloth to remove any loose dust. Now I'm going to apply another coat of finish on it. It's completely normal if it looks cloudy. This is just the tiny scratches that you just created. Again, you let this dry, you just repeat these steps to as many coats as you want to apply. The more coats you apply, the longer this will last before wearing through to the wood and then you'll have to refinish it again. Here's the wood after the second coating, it's much smoother because you just filled in much more right here. And that is how you apply a finish to wood. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe.